There he is, the one and only. Good-looking fighter, good-looking prospect, 10 of his 12 wins as a pro. Come by knockout. Go to the tail of the tape. Again, Jogba only 25. Kujanu is 32. Six foot six versus six, seven and a half. Kujanu, the bigger man in a lot of ways, 265 coming in. A Jogba at 242. Reach advantage in favor of a Jogba who only started boxing at the age of 17. So he has a lot to learn, but there is a lot to like. Heavyweights are in the building. Charles Martin off a win over Gerald Washington, a knockout win on that pay per view. Hopefully, you saw that two weeks ago. That was leading up to Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. Ready for our next heavyweight bout, we go to the ring and Jimmy Lennon. Ladies and gentlemen from Barclays Center here in Brooklyn, Premier Boxing Champions presents our co-main event of the evening, brought to you by TGB Promotions, sponsored by MGM Resorts and Brooklyn Boxing. Judging from ringside for this bout, we have John McKay, Robert Perez, and Robin Taylor. All right, fight fans, here we go. Ten rounds of boxing scheduled in a heavyweight special attraction. Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing black trunks with red trim, fighting out of Burbank, California, by way of Voynesht, Romania. He weighed in at 265 and one half pounds. His record, 17 wins, six losses, with nine of his wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the veteran heavyweight battler, introducing Razvan. Razko! John New. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner in this 10 round co-main event wearing black trunks with red trim fighting out of Stafford, Texas by way of Ugeli, Nigeria. He weighed in at 242 and one quarter pounds. He's a 2016 Olympian, undefeated in his campaign in the professional ranks with a record of 12 wins, no losses, 10 wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the undefeated heavyweight knockout sensation known as the one and only Efe Ajagba. And introducing our third man to the ring, the referee in charge of this bout, Ron Lipton. All right, gentlemen, I've given you the rules of the New York State Athletic Commission. I remind you both now, you're going to respect each other, no intentional fouls. Keep it clean. No one's sportsmanlike conduct will be tolerated. Good luck to you both. Yeah, this fight fought at altitude. 6'6", six, 6'7 six, six, and a half. Tonight's odds are provided by Fox Bet. You can see the odds here for this one, a jog button for Jano. For the main event, if you bet $900 on Adam Kovnatsky, you'd win $100. If you bet $100 on Hellenius, you would win $500. This F.A. Ajagba, Rajvan Kojano. Again, the main event still to come. That is next. Adam Kovnatsky and Robert Halenius. And F.A. Ajagba comes out. And coming off a fight, fellas, as we start round number one, where he faced adversity for the first time as a pro, was dropped by Iago Kiladze in the third round of his last fight. First time, Lennox, that he said that he'd been down all my life, in his words, never <laughs> been down before. Let me tell you, uh, somebody, you know, when you box... Sometimes you have to get knocked down, and I rather get knocked down in the gym. And I'm sure F.A. wanted to get knocked down in the gym than in the real fight. But he got up nicely, he wasn't phased, and he came back strong. Yeah, he was winning that fight clearly, and had Kaladze dazed just before he ran into a right hand. I don't know if you were calling that fight with us. Yeah. You said, hey, you just don't walk into this guy, and that's what Ajagba did. So having learned that, what are your thoughts on the whole... You know, he was able to come back and stop his man, do the whole thing, it looked great, but did get dropped in that fight. Right now, I like what I see from Ajagba. Uh, and he's really got a lot more head movement. He's looking to move his head more, just like that. Let him go! Stop uh, punching! Step back! Really full step back! <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, Lots. 
you know, Lonnie Shields told us, look, he's too straight up, and he's got to learn. You, you can drill a guy a lot over and over again. Sometimes they don't learn their lesson until they get dropped. And see, right now he's looking to slip a little bit more, move his head, but he looks dangerous. Yeah, he's a fighter again as he's you know, learning on the job. He only started boxing at 17. He played soccer throughout his, his whole life. He was quite a good soccer player in Nigeria. And then had uh, basically his first street fight against a uh, Stop punching. Like a Step back. built fellow, a bodybuilder type, bouncer type. He said would not leave him be, would not leave his friends be. And Ajagba, having just been a soccer player, dropped him with the right hand. And therefore, his friend said, hey, why don't you go to the gym? Let him go. What soccer player would Quickly. pick a fight with a guy like that Box. anyway? <laughs> you know? I mean, please. Uh, <laughs> just look at him. Yeah, out of both guys right now, John Bai is really starting with his job. And I've seen a lot of a John Bai, a John Bai right now. That was a good hook to the body. Just a perfect spot, too, on Pajano. So John Bai already sees the initiative of right hand fired back by Pajano. Kajaba's not even throwing the job. He's looking for a, a counterpunch right now, and I think that's a mistake by him. Yeah, uh, Jogba looks comfortable moving forward and being able to pick his shots. Well, Razvan Kajaba, you know, he's been around. He's, he's had a lot of trouble. His last five fights, his last four of them. Let him go! But, you know, he had a big Break clean. Stop he started punching. out. Full step. Uh, they had high hopes for him. Box. You know, he's part of my gym a few times, but uh, right now I think he just wants to make it to these first few rounds. Here you see a great body shot by Jogba, you know, mixing up his, his flurry right there, his punch count. He wants to become a little more multi-dimensional in his attack, so it's a good point. We mentioned F.A. Jogba. Let's go back to that fight we were just talking about. That was only December 21st. He's gotten right back into the ring. And after dropping Iago Kaladze in the second round, Jogba hurt him in the third round. You're going to see it here. And look, Kaladze is all over the place. Looks like he is right for the picking. But he stepped in and got dropped by a right hand. Usually when guys are like this, they're dangerous. And uh, that's what uh, you have to really worry about. Anytime you have a guy hurt, you can't go in there with your chin up in the air. You got to still be concerned with his power. And you saw the knockdown and the knockout by Ajagba, so he was able to finish the deal. But when we asked him, when we asked him about that knockdown, he, he said, do, what do you remember for it? He said, it was like magic. I was suddenly down. <laughs> That's right. you know, so, like magic. Well, how did I get here? Ajagba right, here able to go. use a nice long now, jab now here, here's, Joe. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, here's he's the he's jab. This is the jab that he has to use. And turn it over like he did. He put those knuckles into that jab, which can feel like a right hand sometimes when you turn it over like that, right, Hunter? Yes. Yeah. You know, Henry Tillman, who's in the corner for Kujanu, said, look, he's, this guy's got a one-track mind with that right hand. Kujanu now counting some yeah. shots with a right hand and a hook. But he, they want to take away that right hand. They say, hey, when you take that away, what's left? So they would like to force him out of that. Kujanu, much more aggressive here to start the second round. Well, there was that feel-up period I was talking about. And He's probably under orders to back him up and not to give up so much ground right now. And Tillman probably saw something that, uh, you know, he figured if he backed up a jog bar, it would be more beneficial to Rosman. And that, he started out good. If he keeps it up, maybe he can pull a fury here, you know, put the pressure on and upset the apple cart by, uh, by backing up the guy that wants to come forward. Well, I would think, at the very least, Lennox, he's got to make a jog ball a little more uncomfortable. That was a comfortable first round for him. Oh, yeah, jog ball's very comfortable right now throwing his jab. And, you know, that, that's his prime weapon right there, and he's using it well. Jog ball quickly became a standout amateur, and even though he just started boxing at 17, he won a gold medal at the African Games in 2015, and then represented Nigeria at the 2016 Olympics and got a win at the Olympics. So even though he started very late, really has shown a great aptitude for the sport. Yeah, Ronnie Shields said uh, that he wants the Jogba to really be more focused right now and, and stay focused and never take his eye off the ball, which is the opponent. Yeah, well, then the lack of concentration got him knocked down for the Kaladze fight. But, I, you know, I noticed something that, you know, Jogba throws a good one-two, and he just finally went to it. He followed up that one two and left up across the middle. I think he's open for him and he can use it. And I think that Rosbon needs to do what he did at the up, beginning of the back, round, which is put Break. more pressure on him, keep the pressure on him. He's going to have no luck if he doesn't back up too much with the job. See, Rosbon has his hands.
hands up nice and high, protecting himself. This is where, you know, a junk bar needs to go to the body, throw that left, right, and then come to the body with that left hook. Now, Joe, you mentioned that Pujanu had uh, a bunch of losses in a row. He had lost four in a row before he won his last fight. Yeah. But he was fighting the highest level. He lost to Joseph Parker, who I just mentioned earlier. Luis Ortiz, who really tested Deontay Wilder. And then the up-and-coming Daniel Dubois. So he is, he's fighting the, the best yeah. guys out there. Yeah, but it's not that they don't have titles. He was like uh, 60 versus, you know, like three losses, something like that. Against the guys in front. So you're exactly right. And he's in it with another guy with a great record, so... He's trying to try with a three-punch combination. Well, Not much effect. A lot of what Pajama's doing right now is he's being a little bit uh, physical, which he needs to do, and uh, seeing what results from him. And he said he stood close to a Jogba at the way. He just wanted to, he wanted to feel and see, is this guy really a heavyweight? He looks so skinny. Yeah. But here, like, baby's feeling the strength there. <laughs> that is an illegal move, though, Joe. Correct me if I'm wrong. He's afraid of getting punched <laughs> in the back of the head. Right. We're back here in Brooklyn. Brian Kenny with Lennox Lewis and Joe Goose on one side. Heidi Androl, Larry Hazard with us as well. Round three in the uh, black trunks with the red trim. That is F.A. Ajakba of Nigeria and Rajvan of Kojanu out of originally Romania, now living in Monte Carlo. And uh, this was to, as I think you guys mentioned, comedic effect. Right. Uh, is, is he yeah. pleading with Ron Lipton? No, he looks horrified. He's expecting a punch in the back of the head. Well, well, he, 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 he was looking at Lipton, though. You know, it, 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 was, it was a bit comical. Break. You know, Ross Vaughn's got a great sense of humor. I know the guy. And you can tell it. The fighter means he was very... Really Protect tough. yourself yeah. at all times. Yeah, of course. But, Keep but him again, up, F.A. Yeah, he wasn't really right. Look, a Chadba with another good body shot. Two, three good body shots already in this round in the opening minute. Another one yeah. hooked to the body is working beautifully for a Chadba. Well, he really is going to the body as he pointed out by this round more than any other round so far. Well, his corner, you know, told him to go to the body and come back up with that left uppercut, and he hasn't tried the uppercut yet. There it goes. Ronnie Shields, we saw him in the corner for a Chadba in the last round. I asked him, hey, what type of pace do you want to see a job at? Like, clearly, he's still learning on the job, but he's a nice-looking prospect. And he said, yeah, we'd like to step up after this fight, win this fight, step up, and then fight top ten opponents next year. That is kind of aggressive. Do you agree with that, Joe, or what do you think he'd be ready for? Yeah, I, I look, I mean, based on the fact that he's now just starting to get the idea of moving his head a little bit more and uh, using that upper body movement, uh, you know, I think given a, a few more fights, he's going to be ready to take on a very top contender. Yeah, no doubt. He's got the power, he's got the look, he's got the athleticism, and I think dedication as well. Good and uppercut, he, yeah, by a jog, but yeah, it's becoming a little more uh, multi-dimensional in his yeah. attack. And, and on top of that, he's got one of the great trainers of all time as well. See, what a job but does very well is, you know, when when, they, when the referee breaks them, he comes back and he's the first one to jab. Just pawing with the jab there to the body, but that's a nice little scoring shot. Very active with the jab. You see uh, you get a little more of the arsenal from a jog by, and that's part of the progression of these you know, young heavyweights who started late. And we saw Frank Sanchez, who's been boxing uh, most of his life over 200 amateur fights. And this is a job a very different situation where he only has eight years in the sport itself. And you see Rosman, he's getting a little, you know, he's getting a little courage worked up right now. He's starting to forearm the jog bar against the ropes and then use the right hand off of them and, and with his combination. I think he's doing the right thing. He's, at least he's in the fight right now. He's not out of the fight. Final seconds here in round three. You can see the effect of those punches already on Kushanu's face. As a flash right hand comes out from Ajagba at the belt. Cut! No push. No push. There is Robert Hellenius out of Finland, 36 years old, getting ready for his shot against Adam Kovnatsky right here in Brooklyn. That's our main event. It's coming up next. Uppercut there by Rasvan Kujanu in the black trunks. Come on, man. As you see, F.A. Ajagba in the black and the red trim. Let's go to Heidi Andrel. Heidi? Thank you very much. Here with Ronnie Shields, F.A.'s trainer. I know you said that you wanted more concentration. He seems very concentrated and focused here tonight. What did you tell him going into this round? Well, you know, just, he, you need to go about it a little bit more. The guy's getting tired, but, you know, he's, he wanted to hit him up top too much. You know, we, we need to go to the body to soften him up a little bit, then come on top with a shot. 
Excellent. Thanks, Ronnie. Brian, back to you. Heidi, thank you. Yeah, Chapa just looked like it's a little more in the arsenal now, showing a little wider repertoire in this fight. Again, as he steps up, it's only his 13th professional fight. What a just job. a classy looking heavyweight. Brian, what a job I kind of found this round is looping that right hand around the glove to the ear. And he kind of stunned uh, Rosvon in the very beginning of the fight. He's probably hit him with four or five of those already this round. So, so learning on the job, getting yeah, a little more creative. Yeah, yeah Rosvon's a little right. bit tired right now because he's Step holding back. for no step. reason. You know, no it's not, and, so and, and Rosvon is only, he only had that very active round two. It's not like he should be exhausted right. at this point. And he says he had a very good camp. He sparred with Frank Sanchez getting ready for this fight. Well, you know, it's the fourth round of a 10 round fight. And there is such thing as a second you know, win. Get your second win. And he might get tired right now, but if he stays in the fight, uh, he'll be able to get that second win. But if you're a great the shot. problem is yeah. when he's in this position right now, not getting hit with silly shots. He's definitely got to keep his head moving like he's doing, yeah. but not getting hit is very important at this stage. He's still in the fight. He's not out of the fight right now. He's just got to assume his will on the drop off if he wants to get something done here and actually try to stun or hurt uh, a drop off at some point in this round or the upcoming rounds. And I like what a drop is doing. He's got to be circling because he can't be caught against the ropes uh, because that's where he's at a weakness right now. Uh, here's, here's a little replay we're going to show right there, but we're going to be setting up the jab. There's that little chopper right hand around. And that, you can see him smacking his gloves together. That hurt him, see? He gave an over sign when he hit his gloves over. Right? Yeah, that was a good shot. Able to duck under that right hand from Kajana is a dangerous shot. So Jocko also showing some good head, head movement here. Final 30 seconds of the fourth round. Scheduled for 10. And again, the main event is up next. Adam Pavnatsky and Robert Kalinius. This is truly an international event here tonight. Poland, Finland, Nigeria, Romania, Cuba, United States. Here in New York City, all heavyweights. Another good round. Headlock applied by Kujanu. Another illegal move. It will be back. Talking to all the fighters, and we were in this beautiful spot as we start and get back to this round five here for F.A. Ajagba and Rajvan Kujanu. And in that fighter meeting, we were at Lennox, remember, we had the beautiful view of Manhattan and the skyscrapers. We asked, asked Ajagba, hey, do you come to New York? Do you ever get out? Do you ever see anything? He goes, oh, no, 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 no. I, I, no, no, no. No skyscrapers. Does not like heights. And in fact, only two Rich. people did not go Four out on the balcony back. to see this magnificent Hands view from Brooklyn of Manhattan. And that was a Jagba and our own Joe Goose. Yes, I'm guilty. Do they not I'm have guilty. buildings over four stories in LA? Yeah, what is yeah, it? the railing was about three feet high. You know, it, <laughs> Let's go to Heidi Andrew and get out of this. Heidi. Thank you very much, Brian. Here with Henry Tillman Ross, his coach. I said I heard you saying back him up. We've seen him do that in the start in the second round. What are you seeing that you want him to do more of? Well, I, I want him to take his jab. He's trying to only jab me in the head. And he's gonna jab me in the shoulder, the chest, just make contact, right. push him back, keep him off balance. He didn't throw the right hand with the left hook behind him. Excellent. Thanks so much, Coach. All right, Brian, back to you. And it's Henry Tillman again, 1984 Olympic gold medalist. He was uh, he got by Mike Tyson twice in the Olympic trials and in the amateurs. And went on to be a professional fighter as well, 25 and 6. But that is, uh, again, it's a quite the claim to fame. Gold medalist on what is an outstanding United States Olympic team in 1984. And again, managed to stop Mike Tyson twice. No. Didn't stop okay, him, he didn't stop him, but got wins against the rising tide of Tyson before Tyson went on to become the youngest heavyweight champion in history. A jog boy has to really worry because uh, you know, when he throws his left right combination, he's leaving himself out, out there. So he's got to really come back and worry about defense. I like what Henry Tillman said to uh, Rosvon uh, Kajana to back him up a little bit. He's obviously a, a power puncher like Kajana wants to come forward. Yeah, um, correct. And you, you never know how good they are going backwards. Exactly. And he, they both landed some good body shots in this round. But uh, it looks like uh, uh, Kajana was actually getting a little bit of a second one here in the, in the sixth round. Kajana was looking for that opening. I haven't seen him throw a real telling uh, power Step shot back. yet, but uh, he's throwing good combinations. I have, but he's missed them. <laughs> See, like that. You know, he's just he's missing the big shots. 
So when he does get in close, he should take that opportunity to not get tied up or tie up, but to use crazy way, but to use his inside game, inside trading purpose. Yeah, part of the reason is he's telegraphing the right hand, you know. Well, he certainly did there, but see that left touch with his feet? Oh, 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 the body's not there, though. That's what he's got to do. When he gets in close, he's got to work the body ahead. Final seconds of this round are co-feature in Brooklyn. And here you see Effie throwing a great body shot right on the belt line. And Kajano's just sticking out his tongue. Yeah, now here's here's what I don't like. That's, you know, it wasn't a big shot, but that's called a rabbit punch. That's an intentional punch to the back of the head. And believe me, I'm all for the roughness of this sport, but you have no armor to protect you, and your brain stem is back there, and believe me, I hate people that rabbit punch. I don't like it. It's a dangerous thing. Ron Lipton uh, did speak to him, but you could, you're right. Even if it's just tapping him, and uh, you can take a point away. He's doing an awful lot more. Good body work there by Ajaka. Body shots uh, so far. 23 from Ajaka, 13 from Kajanu. So actually, reasonably close. A little closer to the and Ajaka is continually going to the body in this fight. And this kind of a oh. move attack and nice little four or five punch combination. Kajanu can you know, talk to him. He's complaining again about getting hit in the back of the head. I didn't see that. Kind of cuffing with that right hand around the side of the head. Yeah, but Kajanu, you know, he's all he's doing is accepting punches, but he's not answering back with any punches of his own. And there's a big difference between when if you move your head and you get hit toward the side, and we mentioned that with the Fury and Wilder last week, and then, by the way, the two weeks ago, and then even in the first fight, remember, it was Fury who got hit on the side of the head. Big difference there, and then hitting a man on the back of the head. Very big difference. A low shot there. Time. Time. Go over there. Five. Ron Lipton sets five minutes. Yeah, uh, Jaka has up to five Low minutes. Low blow, unintentional. Don't think that wasn't a little retaliation for what uh, Ross You got up to five minutes. You let me know. That he's getting hit behind the head. Mm -hmm. oh, wait, unintentional low blow. Yeah, unintentional Lipton. low blow. Call it an unintentional un low blow. Unintentional low blow. You tell me when you're ready to go. You ready? <laughs> I don't know. Is that a unintentional, Time. intentional low blow? Yeah. Jaka's have, ready to go. Might have been a brush back. <laughs> that happens when things get rough in there, but you have to uh, we'll watch again and see exactly what happened. Well, he's, being, he's got his head pulled down, so Ajaka was pulling his head down. And uh, if you're pissed, oh, there's shots there by Ajaka. Ajaka staggered by that, comes back and fires and slaps a right hand up the side of Ajaka's head. Ajaka back on the attack. Best success for him in this fight here in round six. But after he got rocked, Ajaka has been consistent in his volume here. A little right hand over the top. Call the Ajaka in the back of the head. Straight up the middle comes Ajaka. Again, though, if you're dipping and turning, and the guy feels an overhead right, then you have to be catching at the tail end of your head down. I mean, that is not a rabbit. Listen, I was never a fan of the right hook. So I never really threw the right hook. No, as a left hook. Yeah, I, I don't think you can generate a good, good amount of power with a right, a right hook. Unless you're in close. Larry Hazard, by the way, giving all five rounds to F.A. Jock, but no shot there. Just step back. Erratic no, full step back. in his attack. Doesn't it seem that way? Wow. Yeah. He, he will suddenly become inspired yes. and then it goes away. Yeah, when he's inspired, he's a fairly dangerous guy. Yeah, but it's inconsistent. Uh, I think a job by being very consistent. He's, he's kind of following the game plan here. It's body work there by Pujano here in the final seconds. And here we see F.A. throwing some good uppercut. Good left uppercut. Uh -huh. Here's F.A. throwing that right hook, left hook, right hook, catching. The one you said you don't like. <laughs> There's a straight right hand that you like, a missed left hook. But, uh, you know, Kajanu, I think, may get, yeah, there's the right hand he got in. And then a nice little short left hook. And he's firing Second back. Out. Let's go. And here we go. There's that little chopper around the side that you don't like. Hey, Shadow listen, good. every punch hurts. Punch here. Right? <laughs> you know, Shadow able to earn a little respect there later in the round, but 
Yeah. In that sixth round, F.A. Ajagba landed a fight high 33 punches. You see Gujano uh, only 13. So it is uh, round seven now. F.A. Ajagba getting the uh, black trunks with the red trim. Gujano there in the black trunks. Let's go to Larry Hazard. Larry, every round? Every single round, guys. Listen, Ajagba is putting on a clinic with this guy. A round is three minutes. You know, you can't give a guy a round because he, he fights for 10, 15 minutes. I got this, I got a job right here, 60 to 54, every round. I'm just waiting for him to sit down on one of those body shots and we can go ahead. <laughs> oh wait, we got one more fight, Larry. Then we go home. <laughs> there we go. I get your point. And it is, I, he's right, Larry's right in that consistent attack with Jogba. Uh, just to put yeah. professional effort and Kajana will get angry and then start fighting back. It's like, okay, you know, yeah, he'll fight back. He has some erratic moments during the round and uh, where he lands a couple body shots and there he's exactly right with the goal. And uh, like right there, that was a nice little shot. And then again, Kajana came out and actually landed two right hands at the beginning of the round uh, while we were uh, assessing things. But uh, again, the play is always being taken away by a jog bomb. Kajano has his head in one spot all the time. All a jogba has to really do is throw a combination, a four or five punch combination. And uh, Kajano's head will still be there. He'll have a lot more success. You're right, and there's that. Well, he, he landed a nice little left up in that right hand in the pocket. And I think the, the body shot that Larry was after for a good one landed, but Kajano took the kind of good one. Jogba with success straight up the middle throwing jabs, then right hands after the time. Speaking of which, Adam Konaski uh, is just like another guy who's just a basic boxer, comes out firing jabs and right hands right away. He's up next to the game. <laughs> that's a big local record for heavyweight punches thrown in that last fight. Chris Ariola, who's trained by Jeff Lewis for that fight against Adam Konaski, breaking the record set by Ike Ibeabuchi and David Toon. Wow, that is a lot of weight going against each other, those two guys. Well, I trained two of for a couple of fights. He's probably the most powerful guy, you know, when he went to get to the cushion. There was no cushion big enough for that to stop the power that I felt from that guy. He makes the powerful 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 guy. He makes Good move by a jog bump. See, a jog bump really doesn't really need to use no power punches. He can use short little punches, short little combinations. That, that's doing the job. That'll really open the door for a big punch. Thank you very much, Brian Wall. Adam Big Day, here we are. I saw you on Instagram. You know, you went to the barber shop, got things cleaned up, got a workout in this morning. What was the rest of the day like for you? I'm pretty much the same as every, uh, it's a routine. So, got to work out and break a little sweat, eat and rest. Speaking of rest, I know you're a new father. You actually told me that your son slept in the ho hotel room with you. It's not often that we hear fighters have that. Was he a good boy? Did you get a good night's rest? Yeah, well, full nine hours, so I'm very rested. I can't wait to uh, fight tonight. In terms of your last fight, you had, you know, you broke records against with Chris Ariola, the volume and punches. What did you learn from that fight, and do you expect that kind of volume here tonight against Robert? Yeah, for sure. I think if I'm able to bring the pressure and uh, throw as many punches, it won't last that long. Looking forward to it. Thank you so much as always, Brian. We'll send it back to you guys. Heidi, thank you. Again, Adam Kovnatsky and his wife Justina had a, a baby boy six months ago, so their lives have changed. Their baby Kaz is home tonight. And speaking of the heavyweight division, Adam Kovnatsky again uh, headline our card here tonight. He's a top 10 heavyweight. And uh, we have heavyweight news coming up later. We'll talk more about heavyweight title fight and a heavyweight champion and Joe Goosen is somehow involved in all this Joe Goosen is what I'm told. <laughs> is Joe Goosen right on that? Joe, you're not saying anything. Come on. I'm waiting for the uh, the other day. The, the, the big reveal. reveal. <laughs> That'll be later. We'll talk to the heavyweight division and Joe's got a little news there and we're in round eight here. F.A. Ajagba really getting the job done against Rajvana Kojano. Hook lands again. As you see Kojano's face is just getting now getting all beat up. Well, you know, since Tamiris had went to distance with Ajaka, nobody else has really got, everyone else has got knocked out. And I gotta tell you, uh, 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 Rosbon here is, is actually holding his own. He's not winning anything, but he's not getting hurt. He hasn't been buzzed, he hasn't been dropped yet. You know, I gotta give him a lot of credit. 
Rosbon turned southpaw there, trying something new. Might as well. And he shut up. But you're right, he tried that hook from the left side. Well, you know, he turned southpaw for a second. I thought Joe was just going to, like, go into a panic. Well, no, you're the one who panicked when I mentioned <laughs> southpaw. Just to get so inside joke. Sorry, but I even brought it up. Right. And again, in, in, in fighter meetings, it comes up again and again and again. Joe Goosen has an unnatural fear of left-handed fighters. Right. So, uh, OB. Now, there's this, there's this, what, that's not the news, by the way. There's a word for that. We're going to look it up. Some rights and lefts coming from Ajagba here in the eighth round as the action slows. But again, Ajagba has been consistent in his attack. And again, I think you have to make different comparisons, right? When you look at Frank Sanchez, what we saw in Ajagba, we're just in very different places. Oh, oh it wasn't right here. Kajanu takes him in. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Give me your gloves. Okay. I don't want you to take too much more punishment. You understand? You got to show me something. Take a step forward. Step to the side. You got to show me something. Box. Ron Lipton giving the warning there. And uh, Kajanu got up at nine. He gave himself every... Heart of those seconds. Pajama's gonna try for a last hurrah here. Another right hand landed hard from Ajaka though. And you see that the face is just getting weathered by Pajama. He's taking the beating. He's game and another combination oh, straight up the middle. There Ajaka. is, there is. Pajama backs up and Ryan lifted his close, but he doesn't stop it. He was thinking about stopping it. He wondered if Pajama could defend himself. And that is really the number one thing you have to judge. Jonathan says, come on, All right. and he finishes the round. Ron Lipton, the referee, was very close to stopping that fight. You see him warning Kujanu there. Even though Kujanu was game and was saying, come on, you know this is just about over. And this came in a moment, Joe Goosen, where it was Ajakba had slowed things down and waited for that right hand. Well, you're right. Actually, Kajanu had slowed things down, and he uh, he really uh, came out very uh, complacent in the ninth round, as if he was tired and, and, and kind of beaten. And there it was, just a straight right hand right on the temple. But right now, Ronnie Shields is really egging uh, Jogba on for a knockout. He wants a knockout mm. here. He doesn't want another distance fight like with Demiris in. Yeah, I believe Ajagba is going to come out strong oh, this yeah. round. Yeah, I have a feeling that Ron Lipton is going to probably stop this in the first if maybe right. 30 it, seconds he, of this, he was this very round. close, Joe Wright, and uh, Kujano was up against the ropes. It looked like he might not be able to defend himself, but then he backed off and so that Kujano was able to keep his hands up. So here now, round nine, scheduled for 10. Ajagba trying again with the right hand. Kujano's body language is not good right now. He is beaten up. His energy is on the way. Stop punching! He is trying step to back. wrestle Full and keep step. Ajakba at bay. Box. You see the swelling over that right eye from the consistent jab from Ajakba. Right hand coming from Ajakba. Good jab, snaps the head back. Ajakba well, really not doing anything right now. Not even throwing punches. Well, he throws one there. Throws the hook to answer back at Chaco. Just trying to finish the job and close the show. Yeah, yeah Ross Vaughn in the corner was telling Ron Lipton, Box. please don't stop the fight. He wants to go the distance. He doesn't want another knockout on his record. So he's going to try to survive and then kind of try to convince Lipton to let the fight go on. But, yeah. Nice combination from Kojanu. Mm -hmm. Firing back. He was able to block that right hand and come back with a combination of his own. Everything needs to throw a combination where it ends with an uppercut, right? He'll have really good success with that. He just threw it and missed it. Right, right, right. Try it again, and now right hand's over the top. Jab backs up Pujano again. You see the jab snap in the head back, and then the right hand to the body. Pujano is talking to him, but he is getting roughed up. Pujano can't even see some of these punches coming because his eyes are swelled up, so he's finding it difficult to even be defensive against uh, a, a yeah, that, that, that right eye especially, Lennox, you're right about that. Break! And it's almost Full totally step closed. Back. Stop punching! Ajagba needs to keep his step head back. up a little bit. Well, you know, what's funny is, Kajanu just had a jog run against the ropes, throwing some punches at him, but the jog is back to the ropes. Takes him with the hook, but a yeah. hook fired back by Kajanu. 
good left hook by Dunn. And you can't, uh, Jack cannot get lazy in here. Nice straight right hand. I mean, we've learned that in his last fight. He's kind of just standing in front of Kajani now and just launching. But he's got to be somewhat careful. Winding up with the hook. Flicking the right hand. You see how Jack needs to step to the side Ooh. and throw that. Oh, and there's that uppercut. Yep. Yeah. Stop the punch coming up the middle. Step back, quick. 40 seconds left Let's to survive go. this fight. Taking too many shots. You got to show right. him something. Well, lifted his again. Back. Box. And again, body language, energy. This came up in the, the Deontay Wilder fight with Mark Green, and I thought rightly threw in the towel. And was criticized by Deontay Wilder for it. But you look at the body language of Pujano. Not good right now. Oh. He takes it. He's just had too much, That's and it's it. over. That's it. That's it. That's it. He waved it off. Ron Lipton has waved it off. It's over. F.A. Ajagba beat his man down and gets his 13th professional win. I thought Ajagba really looked good in this fight, to tell you the truth, against a guy who was in great shape, who's a, a wily veteran, who's been in with a lot of top guys, and Ajagba took him out and dismantled him through the whole fight. Yeah, we've seen a lot of different things by Ajagba. We've seen uppercuts, we've seen hooks. Yeah. I mean, he learned a lot from this fight as well. Yeah, he did. Especially, you know, fighting a guy just as tall as him, learning that his jab is much, way superior than the other guy, and uh, he was using it well. Yeah, he did. And I think he also followed instructions well from Ronnie Shields. Ronnie Shields wanted that knockout. Believe me, I've been in that situation where you're dominating a fight. You got the power to take a guy out. You got the guy hurt and worn out. You got to get that knockout. And then that final knockout happened as uh, Kajano's, I think, just body just finally gave out. He was getting beaten down. Yeah. Mentioned the energy level was just sinking. And he had just found a point where I think wisely, his self preservation, he took a knee. At that point, that's all Ron Lipton needed to see. Yeah. Great job by Lipton. What a pro. What a pro. F.A. Ajakba just doing a nice job all night, getting to 13 0, and eventually stopping Rajvan Kujano, who could just take no more. He would take a knee. He was already on borrowed time. And referee Ron Lipton steps in and it's the end of the night and ladies and gentlemen we have the time of two minutes 46 seconds in round number nine a referee in charge stops the contest he is the winner by way of technical knockout he is still undefeated the one and only F.A. Ajagba F.A. Ajagba gets again to 13-0, 11 of his wins by knockout, and he is aesthetically pleasing, fellas. He is a fun fighter to watch, the way he throws his punches, the way, as we said throughout the fight, he got very creative in this fight as well. Let's go back through the fight right now. In the early going, it was Ajagba asserting himself from the get-go and going to the body, Lennox. Yeah, I mean, he was throwing some good jabs, some good right hooks. That was a good straight right hand that got through, which he throws very well. And there you see uh, Kajana looking kind of scared, thought he was going to get hit. But good combination, good body punches by Ajagba. And here's that left hook, right hook combination. Kojan, Kojanu really trying but had, with no success a jogba throwing great overhand rights and that right hand kind of had a uh, a delayed reaction on kajanu that finally put him down for the first time yeah. but he kept on coming and you've seen you know a jogba was throwing like three jabs before throwing that right hand so he was really opening the way for that right hand to come through rojvan kajanu did his best try to hang in there but again could not stop the rise of F.A. Ajagba. Take a look at the CompuBox numbers. Ajagba outlanded Kujanu 244 to 83 and throwing 664 punches as well in this fight. Power punches as well, well in favor of Ajagba, who went to the body beautifully. And again, as we watch him fight by fight, he just seems to get better and better.